Letting them explore beyond the octave is fun. Alright, so in this video I'm going to be showing off one of my off-trail piano lessons. An off-trail piano lesson is something similar to off-trail hiking. It's something that comes up unexpectedly and spontaneously I just decide to follow the interest of my student or sometimes these are created to solve something that they're having difficulty with and if it turns out to be an interesting exercise then I will write it down and save it in a uh, folder that lives on my laptop called Off-Trail Piano so that I can use it with other students. The purpose of an Off-Trail Piano lesson is to create no interference between the student and the instrument. So while there will be a download of sheets that you can have that kind of show the structured steps of this exercise, they're not meant to be put in front of the student for them to read through. It's more of a teacher guide so that you can remember all the steps and introduce them uh, one at a time. With these structured steps, everything happens, this ends up becoming kind of a complicated sounding thing, but it starts, it's very approachable because it starts with something very, very simple and then builds one step at a time and ultimately leads to creative independence for your student. And this is intended to give them the confidence that they could just walk up to a piano anywhere and just start creating something interesting without feeling like they didn't have a, a prepared piece ready to go. So it's more about learning how to play the instrument in a way of just creating very interesting sounds. So it's gonna be using their ear, uh, focusing on rhythms a lot, creativity and all that. It's not gonna help them with their reading, but it'll help them with almost everything else. This is an exercise that I've used with transfer students. Uh, a lot of times it's their first lesson. Adult students, teenagers love it, and I do it with young kids too. Because again, it is very approachable. It's not that difficult to get started with this. And sometimes you'll have to do a modification of some of the steps. But for the most part, almost any student can handle this. All right, so let's get into it. So ground zero is very basic. All you're doing is taking thumbs on C's. So the, I put the right hand on middle C, left thumb the C below that, pedal down, because it sounds cooler. And you're just creating an eighth note pattern here. One and two and left, right, left, right. Now, as simple as that is, what you can tell your student is nothing will get more rhythmically complicated than that. So moving into step one, now we're going to create a chord progression. We're going to follow uh, the right hand is going to stick with those C's and the left hand is going to do two bars on C two bars on B flat, two bars on F, and then back to two bars on C. And just staying right in this hand position. And the trick here is to get them to feel two bars. Feel two bars before making your change. So however you like to teach your counting, will probably work just fine. Now, moving into step two, what we're gonna do is, instead of just sticking on the C's in the right hand, we are going to take, and we are going to do alternating C and G, so creating a fifth. And what I like to show my students here is that there's four groups of fifths, and on that last group of four, that high G is on the end of four, on measure two. So that is the last thing you hit before you change the left hand. So this would sound like this. And that would be step two. And give them a few rounds through this. Let them get really comfortable with it. A few rounds through that progression, lifting the pedal each time there. Okay, so now moving into step three, now we're gonna add another note in the right hand. We're gonna add an E. So the pattern has been cut to two. We have C, G, C, E, and that's gonna happen two times. And so the second time they hit the E, that's on the end of beat four in measure two. And so that's where your next change will happen. Now, moving into step four, what we're going to do is we're going to take out that E and we're going to go back to just doing the four groups of fifths. And in the left hand, we're also going to start alternating fifths. So we have 
this C, C, G, G. Now this is sometimes where it falls apart. <laughs> so you gotta get them to go really slow and see it. And sometimes I'll just have them hang on that C for a long time so they get that feeling of C, C, G, G. Slow. So that would be step four. Then moving into step five, and this is the last structured part of the exercise, you bring the E back in with the right hand. So here we go. And then from there, you could get them to play through all of those steps. You could say step one, when they're done, step two, go right into it and kind of play it like a song and hear kind of the build of adding each new thing. So that concludes the structured part of the exercise. So now we're gonna start getting into the more creative aspect of this. And the creative aspect of this is you're gonna start allowing them to improvise with the right hand, but we're gonna use constraints here. So to start off, we're just gonna use three notes in the right hand, just C, D, and E, the first three notes of in C position and left hand is going to be the same pattern and we're going to keep with that eighth note constraint so they never hit at the same time and so using those three notes you just allow them to create their own melody From here, then you can expand it out and give them the first five notes. Now, if the fifths are too hard, you can have them go back to doing just single notes in the left hand, but I would really encourage them to try to get those fifths to happen. A lot of time, all it takes is just going very, very slowly so that they can keep track of the movement there and they're not just reacting. So now after you've gotten through the, fit, uh, the five notes, you're gonna start doing some doubles. So what I do is match everything with the C. Seconds, thirds, fourths, fifths. Do the same thing from the top down with the G. And then bringing in some thirds. And they don't have to do doubles the whole time, but just mixing it in a little bit. Now once you get past the fifths with the doubles, now I'll show them the entire octave. So we are in the key of F, but we're starting on C. So some people might say that's Mixolydian. Don't say that to your student. If you say Mixolydian, they're gonna be like, Mixo what? They don't understand that. And I don't like to teach modes anyways because I don't give my students seven different ways to name a major scale. So we're in the key of F, and the progression that we're doing here is a five, four to a one. So even though the, it, it feels like it's kind of centered around C, we're, we're, you know, you're showing them that this is all based on that F major scale. So here, you can just have them introduce that full octave. You could just have them go straight up and straight down to start. just have them mix it up afterwards and then you can get them to start doing some of the doubles there and once you get beyond this after using the whole octave then you give them complete creative freedom and you can take away that eighth note constraint and just let them go for it um, 16th notes you can hold notes out longer and just let them kind of follow their ear and trying to get them to be connected to the line that they're creating. So they're kind of singing that, that melody. And that's the purpose of introducing things slowly, starting with three notes so they can keep track of it. And then add, you could even do one note at a time. How does this change it? What, 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 new, what new sounds can you create by just adding one new note? So you need to decide how much you wanna add and how quickly. So uh, just an example of something that's moving uh, beyond the, the eighth note constraint.
And so from there, then you can start giving them, um, you know, full range of the keyboard and sticking, you, you could go, there's so much you can do with this, really just build it on, but letting them explore beyond the octave is fun. And, and again, it's gonna be, this is something that can build over time. You know, they're not gonna be like ripping solos over multiple octaves straight away, but this is something that they can lead to and, and build up over time. So that's it. I hope you enjoy this exercise. If you have any questions on how to implement this or uh, it's possible I've, I've never really explained this before to anybody. So it's possible I've missed something, but hopefully this makes sense and it's something that you might enjoy bringing to your students. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.